So hi and welcome to Candid Low Code. Uh, Candid Low Code is a vidcast series we're doing at Mendix to directly address the things that our customers and employees are asking for most right now. I'm John Scolomero, the Manager of Architecture and Governance at Mendix, and today I'm joined by Vin Beltrani, a uh, Senior Expert Services Consultant at Mendix, and we're going to talk about uh, consuming and sharing data over REST. So hi Vin, how are you today? Good, I'm doing well John, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. So. Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what we're going to be seeing and uh, what you'd like to show? Sure, sure. So what I've got queued up uh, is an example of how you can use Mendix to connect to different REST services and import data from third parties into your application. And I've also got queued up an example where uh, a customer might want to actually access the data inside of the Mendix database as a system of record, let's say and they can make REST calls over to our application. So REST in and REST out. See, that's really great because I think a lot of people right now are trying to share data. You know, they want to build solutions, but then they want to be able to share that data with other people or share the, you know, functionality of the solutions and apps they're building with other people. So I think that's going to be, that's going to be really useful. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and share your screen. Let's see what we sure. got. All right, so let's start up. All right, so let me go ahead and pop open Mendix Studio Pro. So we're going to be working in 8.8.1. And what I'm showing you now is the uh, very simple uh, landing or homepage in Mendix Studio Pro. Let me show you what our application looks like right now. Uh, it's simple management system where we've got a bunch of teammates. So right now we've got one, two, three, four teammates in our application. I love uh, some of my favorite people. <laughs> some of your favorite people, exactly, exactly. Uh, let's go over then. Uh, there's another section for the actual inventory items. And we've got just a bunch of fake data here that we can use. So realistic, but fake data. Yep. Um, and then we've got a simple, uh, you're probably used to seeing a lot of the Mendix out of the box page layouts, right? So simply yep. creating a master, uh, master detail page here where uh, certain individuals are responsible for certain items. So okay, we've got, great. right, John? So we've got two things that we wanna do. Um, the first one is that we want to go ahead and populate our users. Now, okay. Mendix out of the box has the ability to do things like integrate with LDAP and SSO and SAML and OAuth2 and all these different ways of, of interacting with users. This case here is just a very, very simple use case where we're going to hit an API and pull in a bunch of users from a, uh, a random user generator. Okay, great. Okay. okay does that make sense? Yeah, so let me just echo that back. So what we're going to do is we're going to go go to some public, you know, data source out on the internet and pull some data via REST uh, to populate some random users. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. All right, right. go for it. Let, let's see it work. All right, so uh, that's going to be an admin function. So let me pop over here and show you where the app currently stands and what we need to do. So we're going to go over to import users. And ideally, what I'd like to do is be able to choose the number of users that I want to import from the service and click import users. Right now, this button doesn't do anything. That's our responsibility. So I have here a hidden link, just so it's easy for me to navigate directly to this random user generator API that we're going to use. And this is what we're going to leverage. Okay. So, real simple in Mendix. In order for me to import data into my application, I can just take an example JSON response, the information that comes back from the service, import it into my application, and then just start using it in my, in my model. Awesome, so, and for people, yeah, so for some of the people listening right now, if they don't know what JSON responses means, that it really just is a, a, a way to, a, to encode data. It's like a format for data, sort of like, you know, data in a, a table is stored a certain way, data in Excel is stored a certain way, JSON is a way that people store data to share across the internet. Exactly, exactly. I'm gonna show you uh, what an example JSON response would look like. Um, okay. So let me come down here and let's just say that I hit a uh, endpoint like this and I requested uh, three users. So the type of information that comes back from this API is going to be three users um gives their name their location and things like that the kind of information that we want to import into our application oh perfect nice all right so let's go ahead and start so what i want is the raw data so right now i have it in a presentation so i can show you what the data looks like but mm -hmm. what we're really going to do is we're going to grab the actual source data itself 
So let me go ahead and grab that. And now we're going to go directly into Mendix Studio Pro and we're going to go through the import process. So here I am in Mendix Studio Pro. I'm going to go to the, uh, the page where I do my import and we're going to start by creating a microflow action connected to this file, right? So in Mendix, microflows are how you build out your application logic. So I'm gonna click on that and we're going to say, call a microflow. We'll go ahead and we'll just create a new one and we'll call that the um, get users microflow. All right, so let's go ahead and start building out that microflow. Okay, so here I am, and now I can start building out the actual um, function behind clicking that button. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to drop an activity uh, onto my flow. And this activity is going to be a create, a, create uh, a call rest activity. Sorry, let me go ahead and pull up a call rest service activity. Right, so right out of the box, Mendix has a bunch of activities that I can use in my microflows. Call rest activity, and we need to grab the proper URL that we're going to call. So let's go ahead and grab the URL. And now we're passing a parameter in. So quite simply, we're just gonna go ahead and be able to pass the number of records that we're after. Okay, so just to be clear there, so a parameter is a way for you to like say, change what you pass depending on some other piece of data, right? That's exactly right, John. So on the screen we saw before, it came pre-populated as 10, meaning right. you just hit the button, you would have gotten 10. What I'm linking up right now is the ability to pick uh, any number of users to import into your application. Oh, perfect. Okay. okay. So and the way that you do that is by using the, the curly brace and the one for the number of the parameter. And then that's the exactly parameter. right. That's exactly ah. right. Uh, okay. like a templating language. I could have one corresponds to one and I could have any number of extras. Awesome. Perfect. All right. So this makes sense. I'm making a get request right out of the box. I could make any number of rest type uh, requests like gets and post calls. But a get is all we need to do because we're just going to retrieve records. Um, and let's go ahead and come down now to the response section. So we're going to want to apply an import mapping which means take the information that's coming back from that REST service and import it into your application. Okay. So basically converting that, that JSON data you were showing earlier into something that our application can use. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So let's make that step of importing the JSON into our application so we can use it in the call REST activity. So I'm gonna come over, go ahead, John. No, I say cool. Oh, cool. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add something called, uh, let's go down here to a JSON structure. And we're going to call this the JSON from the random user API. All right, so now all I need to do here is paste all of that, the example that I got back from the service mm -hmm. directly here. I can go ahead and format it and refresh it down here. And what you'll see if I make this a little bit bigger is that from this example, from the example response that I pulled from the service, Mendix has automatically gone and it's parsed this structure into a reasonable data format that I'll be able to use in my application. Oh, nice, okay. Okay, so here I'm just gonna make one change because it does, uh, it helps me label things a bit better. What's nice here is that sometimes things come back with very technical names and you have an opportunity here to give them more business flavor names so that when people are using it in the future, it makes a lot more sense. So that's part of the mapping, like turning something that says like, you know, A into something that makes sense for other people. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Okay. So now we have uh, defined the import. So let's go ahead and save that document. All right, so now that we've saved that document, the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and define the actual mapping based off of that document. So let me go ahead and add an import mapping. All right, and we'll call that import users from the API. 
And now this one's pretty simple. We've already got the JSON structure that we just made together. So that's the JSON. And now we get to pick exactly what information we want to import into our application. Right, so if you're used to doing programming in something like JavaScript, you'd be thinking, wow, I've gotten this big JSON object back. Now I need to parse it. I need to understand how it works and figure it all out. Here, the import wizard makes things really, really simple. I don't have to worry much about the hierarchy of things. I can just click and pick the information I want to import. So in this case, what I want to pull back is I want to pull back uh, the uh, first and last name of the individual. I would like to pull in their email address. Um, we could pull in, uh, let's say, their phone number as well. Okay. okay. So we're pulling in bits of information that we want to pull in. Uh, does that make sense, John? Yeah, it does. So, so basically, the idea is that the first thing we need to do is say, hey, here's the, the structure of stuff that's going to come back from this this data source right and then now we're saying here's how we take that structure and we map it back into what we actually want that's exactly right that's exactly right and once we've got those two steps done now we can actually start using the data we get back yep 100 percent. cool all right so now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to save this and what i have to do is define the mapping from the information that i'm getting from the api to the domain model right and Mendix is built on a domain model. Those domain models look something like this, where the entities that are used throughout my application are represented in a domain picture like this, where the arrows are the associations. So stating it another way, it's basically like a database model, right? It's like you have different tables and those tables have relationships to each other. And though we call them entities and objects, it's basically the same sort of a thing. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. The nice thing is, is that Mendix being context aware of what these entities are, what their attributes mm -hmm. are, and what their associations are, it, 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 it helps you build pages very, very quickly because all of that information is already built in. And, and Mendix is aware of that when you go and build your pages. Cool, great. Right. So let's go ahead and finish off our import. So here, I want to import my users. The nice thing about this is that I've already got an object in my domain model called teammate and it's perfect for receiving the user input. So here now I get to do my official mapping. Uh, uh, an email is coming in from the random user API and I'm going to map that over here to the email address of the user. Phone number, we'll map that over to the phone number of the user and then we'll go ahead and do the first and we'll go ahead and we will do the last name as well. As part of this, when those, uh, I have choices here do I want to create a new object when I do my import and different kinds of options here? We'll go with a simple create a new object. Okay. Awesome. Right. There we go. So now we've got that set up. So let's go ahead and let's go back now to my call rest activity. So when I click on here, I've got most things set up already. I know which URL or which service I'm going to hit. If I come over to my response, I'm applying an import mapping. We're going to apply, apply the import mapping that we just defined. Got it. Right. We know we're going to get back a list of teammates. We're okay there. And now because I have security set, right? Another important thing to remember is that Mendix enforces role-based security. Here mm -hmm. I have security enabled. So the only message I'm getting in my console, that's an error in this case, because I have security set to production is that I need to be mindful of which roles have access to make a call like this. Now, I don't want the regular user to be able to do this. I want the admin to be able to do an activity like this. So I basically just went and said, only the admin's allowed to run an import like this. Got it. Got, Got it? it. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and I can get and run my application. And we've just hooked up everything together. When I click that import button, I should be able to now pick the number of users that I want to import from the service and import them directly into my application. So while we're waiting, um, mm -hmm. I know we're doing this with a random user and you know, data source, but yeah, we could do this with any data source, right? Like you could, you could do this to any API you find out on the internet or even some ones like if our customers have them inside of their own networks, uh, exactly. they could do that as well. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And 
on top of being able to do things like, let's say, pull information from a weather data source or perhaps talk to some IoT device. We also can talk over REST, over SOAP, and over OData protocols, right? Okay. So you have a number of options as well. So let's say I were um, uh, just another developer or somebody, you know, in the, in the business unit, and I wanted to use the data from, uh, from this app. And I think we, we should probably do it in, a, in another one of these recordings, but uh, uh, I could actually connect to another Mendix app and pull the data the same way, right? Yep. You're exactly right. So just like now, this random user API is acting kind of as a system of record where we're getting our information from. Yep. We can also set up our Mendix app to act that way. So in our app, for example, inventory items, we might be the system of record for the inventory items. So maybe in a later session, yep. we go how we can open up our app as an endpoint so people can go and request inventory items and updates and prices from us. Yep, yep. Cool. Right. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see the REST service working. I'd, I'd like to see our random team members. So let's go ahead and introduce some random team members to our team. So I'm going to go ahead and use my user switcher because we said that we enforce role-based security and only admin mm -hmm. have this access. So let's go ahead and go to the admin section and let me import some users. Um, let's go ahead and import 10 more users. So we're going to go ahead and click on import. All right, we got some more users. Let me come back here to my home. And now you can see that we've added a whole bunch of extra users to our application. Ah, I see. Okay, that's awesome. Cool. So, so basically, you know, right now with everybody, you know, working from home and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing, it's nice to be able to know that we can get data from other places should we need to when we're building our solutions, right? Yeah. Um, and this is, this is incredibly useful and it's good to know and good to see how, how basically straightforward it is and easy it is for us to do. Yeah. Cool. Well, Thanks for your time, Ben. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, and uh, uh, I'm sure we'll get another session in soon. For those watching, please let us know what uh, topics you'd like us to cover uh, next in the comments below. And um, I think we have quite a few interesting topics coming up. So I'm looking forward to uh, sharing those all with you. Uh, in the meantime, again, my name is John Scalamero, and uh, this has been Candid Low Code. Goodbye. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you'd like more Candid Low Code content, please go to video.mendix.com or our YouTube channel. If you have ideas for new Candid Low Code videos, please let us know in the comments below.